Wow, look how hot this guy is. He's so hot. Oh. Um, it's funny, I'm pretty sore after uh, yesterday. What are you laughing at? I don't know. I'm pretty sore after yesterday. Yesterday, Jim, and then trying to get hard again, so I need the highest big meal again. I can't believe my creds working, yours isn't. Yeah. I need yours working, but yours isn't. I might pronate a few first again if that's right. Pronate a couple. Stuck in pronating. But I'm getting better. <laughs> Ayo vibes are coming to the end. The entourage has come down to watch Dano. It's been so epic supporting him. Tears. Tears, mate. And the boys are struggling with the separation anxiety. Woo. Been an epic innings, though. So good that we could all see his uh, debut, main draw. Oh. What do you thought? What do you oh, thought? Special. Experience. Absolutely special. Well, you know, just to be one of those, be with one of your mates who you were a little grinder with, and you just. Visaging the Oz Open. Calibrate, <laughs> 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 mate. Thoughts, Seb? How was it? Flexible. Flexible. Yeah, few, flex <laughs> few, <laughs> few flexible tickets were bought. <laughs> <laughs> See you, brother. Oh, see you soon. Good. See you in the Bahamas, mate. Thanks for the good times, yeah. Love you, mate. Love you, brother. Love you, brother. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> Love you, brother. <laughs> so I made the call to stay in Melbourne for the week. It turned out to be a really good one, in hindsight, looking back on it. Uh, we had access to, on the NTC side of Australian Open, so you have uh, a, a sort of training-based side where you have indoor courts, you have your... Uh, a separate little cafe, you have ice bars, you have a full gym there, and it's where all the juniors are based for the Junior Aussie Open. So, although we're all surrounded by a lot of junior players. Ladies and gents, Hayden Jones. How's it going, Johnny? Cal? Good, thanks, brother. How are you? Good. Big kids. Here they are. Um, Two hardest workers in Australia and Paris. <laughs> Felt like a, a different vibe for, from the previous two weeks being on the Rod Laver Arena side of the Australian Open. Uh, felt a little bit more quiet and low key. We could kind of roll in um, to that side of the venue and just get all of our work done throughout the week. An hour, hour and a half before our training session, we'd get a gym session in. We decided this week to lead, uh, to just do one big stint. Sometimes, as you would have seen in the training block, we did, uh, one session, have break, have lunch, go back to a second session. And this time around, we just kind of did a one big block. We'd go gym, leaning on to usually a three hour hit. Uh, one of those hours being separate, Dan O and I, I usually do some specific double stuff. This week I was doing it with uh, Jesse Delaney or Matt Romios. And, um, and then we're all doing getting ball fed by David Barclay, uh, who, was, who was hanging around with us this week, helping us out. Um, so I was skeptical of being a little bit too cooked to just staying on in Melbourne for another week, but no. Scott, sorry about that, Scott. Scott Green. You... Staying on the NTC side and getting our work done and leaving the courts. And we had a really good social time also hanging around the city and just doing some different things. Uh, keep, um, keep the head fresh and not, uh, even though we love tennis and I can handle 95% of my day being about tennis, it was nice to have that 5% outside and uh, just clock a few less hours at the tennis courts. What do you got there, mate? Just, uh, just doing some research. <laughs> you need to do is just get your racket and stick it up your ass. And then you're just going to be right here. It's going to be super good for you. You're going to play way better. It's going to be super good. Butt, butt, butt. <laughs> <laughs> Cup 2007 and Dane Sweeney seeing the ball the best he's ever seen it in his career. I don't like this matchup for Lonai. He's gonna have a crack anyway, right here with his stiff prestige. 
Just to help get most of our practice sessions, we thought we'd uh, have a little team debrief, me and Cal, before our day, and Dave, our coach, our temporary coach for the week. A little debrief of what we want to work on. Um, today on the agenda, we've got the serve return. I think the return especially is neglected, especially in my game. I need to be a really good returner. And I've been returning up a little bit more, so I'm going to keep making sure I'm feeling good returning up on seconds. Uh, keep honing that in. Got some baseline drills. I've been only like just hitting with hitting with really good players, but it hasn't been like physically tough because they're kind of in the tournament and don't want to be you know running around too much. So a lot of baseline drills, two plus one line, that sort of stuff. Keep the fitness up and uh, also complement everyone's game. But transition and body work um, that's obviously really important uh, for anyone's game, but something I'm kind of trying to work on a lot. So yeah, me and Cal, a little coffee, a little admin. Just, uh, Enthusiasm is growing. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to Margaret Court Arena from Australia, the Sunshine Coast, Callum Puttigal and Dane Sweeney. <laughs> That's so good. Alright, doing a bit of cross courts on each shot. When one person says cat, that means they're going to come in line and play the point out. Our recovery routines, they be they've come and gone in different waves. Yeah. At times, like back gotcha. back when you lived in Brisbane, used to be really good actually, but then I was really bad at other things. But <laughs> the, <laughs> this chapter we're about to commence on, I know stretch recovery sesh every night. Every night. Every night. Minutes at least. Thirty, 30 minutes. minutes. Try the forty-one minute mark. That's Dave. Come on. That's Dave. That's this Dave. Dave. That's Dave. 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 That's Callum. I'm Callum. Dave. I'm that's Dave. Dave. He's, that's, that's Dave. Dave. That's Dave. Callum. I'm Dane. That's Callum. That's Callum. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Barclay. Mr. Jalen. Saturday afternoon. Could be worse. <laughs> what does Saturday afternoon mean? Uh, I don't know. I might get on the races actually this hour. <laughs> you know? Adam's been loving his equestrian of late. <laughs> Dave Barclay is just such a legend. One of our best mates. He's, uh, I met him, he was actually a shy, timid little boy at about 17. Very respectful Japanese nature, half Japanese. <laughs> uh, and Dave has just blossomed comedically and unbelievably into, a, into such a unique, uh, charismatic dude. So... He loves tennis as much as any of us. He chose after Dano's um, playing time at the Aussie Open had finished, he chose to hang around this week. Fortunately, his uh, tennis club, the, most of the coaching only goes back now, uh, being like the 20th, uh, 28th of January or in a few days time. So he hung around this week and Helped us out, ball fed us. He got in the ice bath with us every day. He and uh, always just so many laughs going down and See so much David. fun banter being in yeah, his company. Lately, yeah, his thing has been he's always just uh, open for signs from the universe, signs about decisions he's got to make, or just signs about where to where to direct. You know, a morning or or you know his different. Um, forks in the road in his life so I find it just uh, 
I find it beautiful and I find it humorous watching him flip coins at every decision and watching him notice all the little uh, signs that are spread around um, that one can be open to if they're actually looking out for them. And it's all about the, that interpretation. You definitely could see it as being silly, but uh, I, I love watching that and I love um, recognising that there is mysticism and uh, subtle magic going down in our day-to-day -day lives. Hi Dave, we're out here supporting Dano in his early stages of the modelling career, posing it up, it's good walking. Everyone that keeps asking why Dave Barclay is hanging out with us, it's not, on, it's not only so he can drive us around and do, the dishes. and do the dishes, but it's also so he can sweep the court. After he didn't even hit one ball. Still, still single, about to turn 70. <laughs> <laughs> G'day guys, Dane Sweeney here, tennis player and human being. So I get to number 91. Oh. I get to 99 in the world, I'm going to chuck an earring in my left ear. Go to hit first. Alright. Because you have to prove your successes before you can have the authority to look like a rat bag. <laughs> yeah, you know, the proof has to be in the pudding of your trail. Trailblazer, you can put a piece of metal in here. Yeah, you gotta hit the curb on the side to know where it is. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Saturday, day off. Driving down to Mornington, thought we'd just go hit the beach for a sec. Dano's dusted from the crew week's proceedings. Gonna go get in the water and then uh, head back home. Meet up with our one of our closest friends, thy Adam Gadecki, also known as Reasonable Shelf. With a hot sister. Supplementation on days like this. Yeah, this is when you need that extra coffee shop. Bit today, Callum. I'm going a little bit cheeky today. A couple of mangoes with the yogurt, some sushi. Actually, it's not that cheeky yet. It's just this. Bit of peanut butter action could be. What do you reckon, Dave? Um, have you tried these tortillas? They're unbelievable. Caramel's my favourite. White shop as well. Just thinking about heading to a challenger now after, especially for Dane, having like breakthrough main draw uh, Grand Slam success or qualifying for Grand Slam. Me having a couple of good challenger results into last year, I can recognize that the shift in expectation moving into a challenger has changed. For me, it's not a case of, oh, I'd like to make a semi and collect some decent points. I'm kind of feeling like I'm going there to win the tournament. And I was just asking Dana how he's feeling about that considering that he's just had a breakthrough. How are you feeling? Yeah, thinking maybe a little bit, definitely more belief that I can win challenges. I've always thought I could win challenges. Like even last year when I was struggling, um, I always thought like it's 
anyone's it could be anyone's week at any time even though it's like low yeah. confidence but definitely now I feel like I'm at a point because I didn't think I played I played good during Aussie Open definitely really good in patches but also pretty average and pretty scrappy in patches so it's not like I just had a good result because I played some fluky high level tennis I think I played quite quite a repeatable level so I think I can go into the challenges yeah not it's tricky you don't put pressure on yourself by just expecting that you're going to win every match because the challenge is so tough but I definitely have more belief that even on my average days I can still you know still win against the, the top guys at challenges so I think it's I think it, yeah it's more belief and um, definitely yeah, more more motivated and hungry in that sense I don't think it's translated to any more kind of pressure um, or if it has it's definitely backed up with with kind of belief and confidence that I, I can do it. It's not just some unrealistic thing. But yeah, feeling feeling pretty good going into Bernie. It's going to be a step down um, in terms of like how the tournaments run and kind of atmosphere. So that will also be maybe a little bit tricky. There's bit girls a, there though. Bit so of a reality check. That will be a bit motivating. What do you mean, mate? You're locked up now. Yeah, true. No, You'll see that on uh, episode seven, Dano <laughs> cracking a ball and chain. Ball and love. <laughs> I fell in love on episode four. What episode is this? Probably four. This is going to be probably five. five We're five, looking at kept, love. Um, looking into the future. So I'm tied up now, so sorry, everyone. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, John and Bernie. Back to the. I'm just keen to get back to, to the, the ocean. factory. Ocean every morning, cold swims, coffee, start the day. Also really keen this week just to work on heaps of shit. Um, like learnt a lot from AO playing, get to play, got to play four matches in a row, so got to learn a lot Must be nice. about my game. I haven't played four matches in a row in so long. <laughs> I so can't wait to play so Tony again now. Yeah, I'm keen. Spectacular. I'm just super keen. I know it's that feeling after a good week, you just lock, like really keen to lock in on the, on the training court. Get the back end out of the middle of the court, get it cross court and deep. That's Dave. That's Dave. That's Dane. That's Dane. And Scal. That's Cal. Just waiting for him to hit a backy. There it is. Best backhand in Australia. Past, Ever. present, past, present, and future. Best backhand in Australia. Smooth. Smooth. Yeah. Best nice. genetics. Best backy. <laughs> Tuesday. Couldn't be more tired if I tried somehow finding a way to be sleep deprived every night because hanging out with the boys and them is too exciting. <laughs> Off to get a coffee, probably need a triple shot instead of a double shot this morning. Did he say a quad? Huh? I need a quad shot or a quad shot. Quad shot, yeah, quad shot or a forklift. Need a uh, coffee, we'll get a quad shot coffee should get us up and a forklift should get us up. So if you know any forklift um, hiring companies, let us know. No. So simple. That reliable. Pile over at Lorenzi. It's like shows guys, up. Yeah, it's just like Pile Lorenzi. Nothing pretty. Trying to get my back in. Trying to get my back in from feeling like it's here. I'm feeling a bit too far behind and I'm kind of like catching up. And yeah. I just get, there's no spin. Yeah. Margin of error is so low and I can't really spread to. So you get to the central. Yeah. And then when I play like more aggressive guys, they can just get them to their forehand and just. Yeah. Even though I move really well, I'm just in the position, I'm just not going to win any points. Yeah, I also so think it's, it's a case of like getting uh, behind the ball. Yeah. Because when you're next to it, then you have to go left. Yeah. And Sharky getting a few coach me, I can keep my elbows close to my body. And that allows this to like drop a little bit more, and I'm going to be able to kind of. Get more rapid drop and then more spin. I'm gonna shake it, get more spread. Just have more margin for error. So I'm gonna get a bit higher and above the net. If my elbows are too like out here, and then there's not, there's nowhere the racket can really drop. 
where it's kind of more of like a side, more arm, but if it's kind of it's more out here like Jocko, I can really use the hips more, there's more looseness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think yeah, if I'm just focusing a little bit more keeping it, elbows more close to my body, then it's going to allow it yeah, to drop, like Benny Mitch, allow it to drop, and I can use my hip to, yeah, it's kind of, it's a bit more arm. That was actually a legit good sesh. Okay. Epic, boys. Epic. <laughs> Loved it. T and G, gym, three hours. How are you? That's pretty good for a coach. Check it. So uh, everyone probably heard that interview of Kyrgios interviewing Djokovic, asking him about which tree in the botanical gardens he goes to. He was photographed in the paper of hugging a tree, and apparently there's the same tree he goes to every year. So uh, we love connecting back to the earth. We have to spend so much time with our shoes on the tennis and shoes on before we leave the hotel room. So I'm trying to make the effort to get to the botanical gardens a few days in that training week and and uh, just sit on the grass and, and touch some trees. And we were joking around talking about trying to find the tree that Djokovic was uh, climbing and, and going, to, going to climb that one. One day out till we leave to Bernie, it's Thursday the What's the date? 25th. The 25th. Leaving tomorrow morning. Have a nice little slow morning again with the boys. Getting a little coffee in the city. Yeah, been on the late, been on the late sketch. Hitting two till 5 p.m. It's nice. Trying to uh, watch, stay up late, watch the Aussie Open. Have a nice slow morning coffee. Then... Hardest part of that night, just trying to sleep with all the. So tired, but that one. So tired, but it's just that fun talking. <laughs> uh, best thing ever. <laughs> Dano checking out yeah, where, we, where we can head out later. Packing up. Yep. Packing up. Chapter, I don't know, two, I guess, three maybe, off to Bernie. Chapter two. Pretty pumped what? that I invested year. in myself here and actually got a nice suitcase to start the year. Had that many zips broken last year. Um, Callum Splurgigil. Yeah, just been splurging now. Got a few ni nice floral shirts today. Just contemplating whether to bring two or three pairs of shoes. Three, you reckon? Yeah. I don't slide as much as you though. Yeah, two I'm to three. I'm on the front foot doing this. Not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> in and around the training week, I tried to focus uh, in the gym on just uh, getting a little bit more explosive. Just going to keep trying to do that this year, just building my leg strength. Uh, up a fair bit and then just doing some uh, some Sammy Oster type of uh, chest uh, shoulders abs you know because I'm I'm single and I live in a hot climate on the doubles specific side of things again I was working on just uh, shortening my swing I felt like when I played in Adelaide I was under pressure I was swinging even more in my volleys than, uh, than I had in the past I just was trying to just keep working on uh, Drilling in that muscle memory to be uh, head at the contact point, not swinging at it, just still, just still and balanced on my volley. I feel like I've improved a lot at my smash consistency and also the power in the body to be able to get up to the smash with the, the coordination of the feet and everything. I feel like that's got a lot better. I've just been told there's a few bindies, but you know sometimes you just have to sacrifice things to get rewarded. So. I'm just going to sacrifice pain. It's only temporary, so it's fine. Any bindies, boys? Think about how painful it would be quick. You're going to yeah, step on one. Yeah, no bindies. Yeah. Wow. You're complete with it. That was great. Thank you. What's up, guys? Yeah, doing the opposite and actually finding... So that just proves you attract what you resist. Yeah. All right, we solved it. You know everything. That's the last. This is the last episode forever. We've just solved it. Easy. It's easy. Where are we going? 